There really is a sense of tension and pressure. Oh, and definitely. Urgency. It's na- it's as, now. As Aaron, right. As Aaron Rodgers said himself back in January, everyone's on the hot seat. Yeah. And he's right. He's on the hot seat. Robert Sala's on the hot seat. Joe Douglas is on the hot seat. Everybody's on the hot seat. And that's the negative. The positive is nobody expects them to be what we expected them to be last year, yeah. even though – They've got better pieces now yeah. than they had last year. Yes. We just we 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 got sucked into this idea that Aaron Rodgers is going to go to New York and everything's going to be great and they're the hard knocks team and Rodgers with the help of the NFL films producers and HBO, they they made me think that he was God. I'm choosing my words carefully, different. <laughs> Than, than the guy in Green Bay that he had matured. And I'm not saying he hasn't. I see, again, this is what happens when you're trying to choose your words carefully. I just got sold a bill of goods on Aaron Rodgers that may not be, you know, accurate based upon things he's said since then. But I got caught up in this idea that, you know, he seemed to be very aware of his football mortality and appreciating his teammates and out of Green Bay after all those years. And they, they involved him in, probably too much as it relates to personnel because they got some guys that really didn't contribute last year who were there because of Aaron Rodgers and only because of Aaron Rodgers. So they, I think this year they, they will find a sweeter spot where Aaron Rodgers isn't ignored, but you look at the moves they've made so far. There's not a former Aaron Rodgers teammate to be seen yeah no David Bakhtiari right no Aaron Jones you know Aaron Jones gets cut they don't make a beeline for Aaron Jones oh and and remember going into the offseason and in the immediate aftermath of the trade deadline oh well the 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 Jets are going to go after Devontae Adams in the offseason well they they signed Mike Williams so there's been no talk about Devontae Adams going to the Jets so they they've they've taken a big step back from the Aaron Rodgers friends and former teammates plan, which I think was smart. Agreed. They've added these guys and we'll see. It's the, it's good that they have very low expectations. It's bad that there is a sense of tension and stress and sensitivity. I don't want to go down the rabbit hole from last week with the comment that was made on the NFL media podcast about the, the very heated conversation between the yeah. owner and Robert Sala. Right. But I can just tell you from the way that was handled in the aftermath by them, it made me even more convinced that they are feeling the heat and they're very sensitive to the heat. And it's like, these are the Jets. You think that they're used to everything by now. They are very sensitive to the perception that, you know, it's one gust of wind away from crumbling yeah i think i mean i i don't disagree with you I, I think they are right i think also too they're very aware that their team is really talented and the rest of the league's looking at them going man eh, you're talented you guys better show up this year like the, the roster's real there's no excuses right yeah i mean we, we know rogers got to stay healthy and all that but yeah I, I think the fan base right is is expecting a lot i think a part of the fan base right and i would say of the jet fans i know 50, 50, 50% of them, maybe more, I think are like, I can't believe they brought Robert Sala back. I think there's a little bit of like, I don't know if we, we shouldn't have just changed the whole regime, right? So there, there's definitely pressure up here right now. And then, hey, yeah, you add on hey, some of the names that are on there now and Aaron Rodgers, the quarterback, right? Uh, it's uh, the, the Jet fans want it right now. And you look at it and, and like, like you can't fault Joe Douglas for what he's doing right now. Joe Douglas has put out a product right there that's it's it's real. So now they got to go out and play. But we talked about the defense and the players there. You talk about the offense and you go through that now and what the Jets look like. I mean, it's it's left tackle Tyrone Smith. It's Elijah Vera Tucker, a kind of an all-pro caliber type of guard. It's Joe Tipman, who they took from Wisconsin in the second round last year, starting center, right? It's John Simpson, who they got in free agency this year at the other guard. It's Morgan Moses, who they traded to the Ravens, right? And then you go, wait, they put Conklin at tight end. Holy cow, it's Brees Hall at running back. 
and it's Garrett Wilson, a receiver, with Mike Williams on the other receiver and Alan Lazard working the middle, you start to go, damn, the Jets are a real deal Holyfield right there. They better be damn good. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's the type of year and pressure, Mike, that I think we're talking about where it's like yeah, it's – it's go to the playoffs or you're probably going to be fired. It feels that way. And and I don't think that's crazy with the, the talent we see on the team right now. I agree completely. There's still two key ingredients in all of this. And, yeah. you know, they've already got the over-under win totals out for all the teams. I talked about that some on Friday. It's kind of hard to do that before the draft. The draft still will reconfigure things because there will be teams that acquire – players who can come in right away and make an impact we just won't know until it's time to play but you know the other big thing Chris the other thing that we don't really focus on until the day after they remove the sheet yeah from the schedule yeah is when do you get your games do you get your schedule in a way that is more conducive to picking up wins I'm looking at the Jets opponents now we know they play the Patriots Dolphins and Bills twice they've got the Texans the Colts the Rams, the Seahawks, the Broncos. You know, when you get the Broncos is going to be, I think, a factor in whether you have a chance, a better chance of beating them. You'd rather get the Broncos early because they're breaking in a new quarterback. We still don't know who it's going to be for sure. You want to get them ideally before it all settles down and maybe they, you know, figure it out. And this new quarterback, especially if they draft someone, you want to get him earlier in his career. You don't want to get him later in the season when he's starting to have the game slow down. Same so thing with having the Vikings on their schedule next yeah. year. So they're you playing to go what? To Minnesota early. What is then late? What is it? The AFC South and the NFC West, or is it the what NFC conference is it? They have the NFC West, so they have to go to San Francisco and Arizona, and they've got the Seahawks and the Rams. They pick up the Vikings for that. That's 17th, 17th game. game. Right. They almost it was almost it was almost Rogers back to Green Bay. It almost lined up. Wow. Rogers back to Green Bay. But it's Rogers back to Minnesota, which is almost as good given all the years that he tortured the Vikings fans. Yeah, well, hopefully he'll love to torture you one more time on the way out there. That'll be good, definitely. But yeah, that, 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 listen, you you make the point though. You're right. I mean, one you you laid it out I think the right scenario, but two, the the big thing is is yeah, how do those games play out as far as how they are you know that's where I you don't you don't want to make predictions but yeah when we see the schedule every year the one thing that we do together is go let's look at the first four or five games that's you it's it's tangible to kind of go into that a little bit instead of like well week 14 early December win like come on get the hell out of here like we don't know then but we kind of know what the teams are going to look like early on and if yeah the Jets got Buffalo week one got to go to the 49ers in week two got to play the Rams in week three and then got to play the Houston Texans in week four I don't give a damn how good their roster is I'm going to go whoa that could they could start out one and three and then, then we know, you know, the crap hits the fans. Sorry, Manchester. And then it's all of a sudden, oh, gosh, we're, we're you know, snowballing out of control in, into Loserville. So, yeah, that is Especially a big part of Especially this it. year right. in New York. Right. This year in New York, it's right. critical. And for the past couple of years, every time their schedule comes out, I say, who did they piss off at 345 Park Avenue? Yeah, no, right. right. And, and it's good that that person is pissed off at them for a change instead of me. So, uh <laughs> This year, and and this is where, I don't know how effective the lobbying even would be, but you want to have an emissary to the league office just reminding them, hey, hey, you know, you kind of you kind of stuck us with our toughest games in the first half of the season each of the last Three two years. years. Do you yeah, think maybe that'll balance out a little bit. That we'll have, you know, some like even the Steelers, like. It's going to take time for them to figure out Russell Wilson, Justin Fields, Arthur Smith is the offensive coordinator. Right. Like, you know, if we, right. if we got to play the Steelers anyway this year, you know, I'd kind of rather get them before they figure out things. Any team that's undergoing major transition, especially at the quarterback position, I think generally speaking, it's better to get them early than late. The only flip side to that is – like if it is a rookie or if it's somebody new and maybe they've got some ways of doing things that you're not ready for, I'd still prefer to get them before they're comfortable. 
I'm I'm not worried about them making me uncomfortable. They've got to get comfortable before they can make anybody else uncomfortable. Yeah, I don't disagree with that thought, right? I mean, yeah, you talk about you know new quarterback, young quarterback, uh, new team, all that. We saw that the greatest quarterback of all time went to a new team and had an adjustment period, and they were sitting there at seven and five. I mean, four and four with Brady went to the Bucks. So I'm with you there, right? It, it's better to get that situation early rather than late when they're okay I got a hold of the offense I feel good I'm used to the NFL whatever that may be we'll see the Jets have had arguably the toughest schedule in football I think it's three years in a row Mike where we've literally looked at the first six or seven games and go I don't know if anybody's got a tougher first six or seven games than the Jets it's pretty incredible but yeah the pressure's on this year nobody cares nobody it's 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 it's, it's where it is like you said it right up here in New York, I don't care if they play the Chiefs five games in a row to start the year. The the Jets fans expect winning this year with the team they got there, and hopefully they can do that. I mentioned the over-under win totals. The Jets via DraftKings Sportsbook are at 9.5. That seems a little high, even with that 17th game. Yeah. That seems a little high, but it's probably, you know, that's a, you could see – you know, it won't take much to get over nine and a half. I could see them under, but okay. But, you know, when you consider the highest number is 11.5, that's the Chiefs, Ravens, and 49ers, right. I believe. Right. Nine and a half just seems a little high. I, I It's it's ambitious. You know, I mean, we, we know that. But I, it's right on the fringe of, like, what we were talking about. A team that's really good on paper. It's talented. They're a playoff caliber team as we sit here and look at them right now. It's just, yeah, can they prove it? Can they stay healthy? They got old guys, like you said, because they're kind of in, let's play, let's go all in right now. We can't develop a right tackle. We need somebody that can block Rodgers this second. We can't worry about week four going, we're still game planning, worried about our right and left tackle because they're young or whatever else. That That's the mode they're in, so uh, I, I think it's probably just right, and that certainly would make me think it would. I mean, I'd probably at this moment right now, like you, I, I, I you know, uh, e, and maybe pick the under, but let's see how the draft plays out. Let's see what the schedule looks like. Maybe that'll change our opinions. By the way, I can't believe I went the whole segment without mentioning that it is April 1, Calamino to our Greek friends, John and Bob Vasilopoulos, but it's also April Fool's Day, and it I is. think that the fact that it's a day after Easter, we lost sight of it. Here's the text that just came through from Michael David Smith of PFT, and I think it's a it's a good message to anyone. I'm going to read it verbatim. Reminder, it's the worst day of the year to be looking for news on social media. I've already seen one dumbass retweet an obvious April Fool's joke. So that dumbass was not me, but uh, watch out. Yes. Because, you know, the way that X is structured now, and, and I know we need to take a break, but I still don't understand this. They break your feed down into who you follow and this for you algorithm that I see a lot of stuff on there. And it's like, why do they think this is for me? <laughs> like what? Like this ain't for me, Elon. But a lot of times that's your default. So somehow some bullcrap, phony, fake Adam Schefter, fake Ian Rappaport gets into your for you and that's how it happens it's like what the hell why, why can't we just go back to who we choose to follow what's this other thing that we accidentally get sucked into from time to time i hate it i hate it i hate it uh i hate that part of it and there are plenty of things about that specific platform that i'm not really thrilled about right now but that's the worst part so beware beware on april fool's day as to who you believe and who you don't believe all right by the way we mentioned the DraftKings over-under total for the Jets. DraftKings Sportsbook is an official sports betting partner of the NBA. And this season, new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets instantly. Download the app and use the promo code PFTLIVE when you sign up. DraftKings Sportsbook, the crown is yours. And please bet responsibly. When we return, Jadavion Clowney on why last season was his Kobe year. That and our draft of the veteran players who will benefit most from a fresh start. We'll do that next here on PFT Live.
Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.